Hi and welcome viewers. Uh, this lecture is about search and rescue. Search and rescue services provided to the survivors of aircraft accidents as well as aircraft in distress, regardless of their nationality. The provisions of search and rescue is organized by rescue coordination centers, RCCs. They are staffed 24 hours a day by trained personnel proficient in the use of the language used for telephony communications they have means of rapid and reliable two-way communications with the appropriate units and facilities. Now we will discuss in details about the search and rescue procedures. Annex 12 is applicable to the establishment, maintenance and operation of search and rescue services in the territories of contracting states and over the high seas and to the coordination of search services between states. It contains standards and recommended practices related to locating and rescuing survivors of aircraft accidents. Search and rescue service is defined as the performance of distress monitoring, communication, coordination and search and rescue functions, initial medical assistance or medical evacuation through the use of public and private resources including cooperating aircraft, vessels and other aircraft and installations. Now we will discuss about some definitions which uh, we will be going to use in this uh, presentation. Alerting post. Any facility intended to serve as an intermediary between a person reporting an emergency and a rescue coordination center or rescue subcenter is known as alerting post. Uncertainty phase. It's a situation where a uncertainty exists as to the safety of an aircraft and its occupants. Alert phase. This is a situation wherein apprehension exists as to the safety of an aircraft and its occupants. Distress phase. This is the situation wherein there is a reasonable certainty that an aircraft and its occupants are threatened by grave and imminent danger and they need immediate assistance. Emergency phase, it's a generic term which means uncertainty phase, alert phase or distress phase. Ditching, this is a term used for forced landing of aircraft on water. Rescue Coordination Center, RCC, is the unit responsible for promoting efficient organization of search and rescue services and for coordinating the conduct of search and rescue operations within search and rescue region. Then comes rescue subcenters, a unit subordinate to a rescue coordination center established to complement the rescue coordination center to particular provisions of the responsible authorities. Search and rescue region, it's an area of defined dimensions associated with rescue coordination center within which search and rescue services will be provided by rescue coordination center. Search and rescue unit, it's a mobile resource composed of trained personnel and provided with equipments which are suitable for the expeditious conduct of search and rescue operations. Establishment of search and rescue services. Contracting state shall individually or in cooperation with other states shall arrange for the establishment and prompt provision of search and rescue services within their territories to ensure that assistance is rendered to persons in distress and these services shall be provided on a 24 hour basis. Those portion of the high seas or areas of undetermined sovereignty for which search and rescue services will be established shall be determined on the basis of regional air navigation agreements. Contracting states should establish joint rescue coordination centers to coordinate aeronautical and maritime search and rescue operations. Contracting state shall delineate the search and rescue regions within which they will provide search and rescue services. Search regions shall not overlap and neighboring regions shall be contiguous. Contracting state shall establish a rescue coordination center RCC in each search and rescue region. Each rescue coordination center 
as appropriate rescue sub center shall be staffed 24 hours a day by trained personnel who are proficient in the use of language used for radio telephonic communications rcc search and rescue communications the communication facility should be such that they should be able to communicate with the associated air traffic service units with associated rescue sub centers with appropriate direction finding and position fixing stations coastal radio stations which are capable of alerting and communication with surface vessels the headquarters of search and rescue units in that region all maritime rescue coordination centers in the region and nautical maritime or joint rescue coordination centers in adjacent regions they have a uh, communication systems with designated meteorological officers and with other search and rescue units alerting post and cosper search set mission control centers which are servicing the search and rescue region each rescue sub center shall have means for rapid and reliable two way communication with adjacent rescue sub centers a meteorological officer search and rescue units and alerting post contracting state shall designate as search and rescue units elements of public or private services suitably located and equipped for search and rescue operations search and rescue units shall be provided with equipment for locating promptly and for providing adequate assistance at the scene of an accident each search and rescue unit shall have means of rapid and reliable two way communication with other search and rescue facilities which are engaged in the same operations equipment required for search and rescue each search and rescue aircraft shall be equipped with a device for homing on distance frequencies each search and rescue aircraft when used for search and rescue over maritime areas shall be equipped to be able to communicate with vessels each search and rescue aircraft when used for search and rescue over maritime areas shall carry a copy of the international code of signals to enable it to overcome language difficulties that may be experienced in communicating with ships unless it is known that there is no need to provide supplies to survivors by air at least one of the aircraft which is participating in search and rescue operation should carry droppable survival equipment contracting state shall coordinate their search and rescue organizations with those of neighboring states they have to cooperate contracting state in so far as practicable they have to develop a common search and rescue plans and procedures to facilitate coordination of search and rescue operations with those of neighboring states the authorities of a contracting state who wish their search and rescue units to enter the territory of another contracting state for search and rescue purposes shall transmit a request give full details of the projected mission and the need for it to the rescue coordination center of the state concerned or to such other authorities as has been designated by that state the authorities of contracting state shall immediately acknowledge the receipt of such request and as soon as possible indicate the conditions in which projected mission may be undertaken assistance to other states each contracting state should authorize its rescue coordination centers to provide when requested assistance to other rescue coordination centers including assistance in the form of aircraft vessels personnel or equipment operating procedures during search and rescue any authority or any element of the search and rescue organization having reasons to believe that an aircraft is in an emergency shall give immediately all available information to the rescue coordination center concerned rescue coordination centers shall immediately upon receipt of such information concerning aircraft as an emergency evaluate such information and assess the extent of the operation required when information concerning aircraft in emergency is received from other sources other than air traffic service units the rescue coordination center shall determine to which emergency phase the situation corresponds and shall apply the procedures applicable to that phase there are three emergency phases uncertainty then uh, second will be alert and the third one is distress 
termination and suspensions of search and rescue operations. Search and rescue operations shall continue when practicable until all survivors are delivered to a place of safety or until all reasonable hope of rescuing survivors has passed. The responsible rescue coordination center shall normally be responsible for determining when to discontinue search and rescue operations. If a search and rescue operations becomes impracticable and the rescue coordination center concludes that they might still be survivors, the center shall temporarily suspend on-scene activities pending further developments and shall promptly inform any authorities, facilities or service which has been activated or notified earlier. When a pilot in command observes that either another aircraft or a surface craft is in distress, the pilot shall keep the aircraft in distress in sight until compelled to leave the scene or advised by the rescue coordination center that it is no longer necessary to remain near the distress aircraft. He will try to determine the position of the craft in distress as appropriate the PIC will report to Rescue Coordination Center or a traffic service unit as much of the following information as possible, like type of craft in distress, its identification and condition, its position expressed in geographical or grid coordinates or in distance and true bearing from a distinctive landmark or from a radio navigate. Time of observations which are expressed in UTC number of persons observed, whether persons have been seen to abandon the craft in distress, on scene weather conditions, apparent physical conditions of survivors, apparent best ground access route to the distress site and act as instructed by the rescue coordination center or air traffic service here. If the first aircraft to reach the scene of an accident is not in search and rescue aircraft, the pilot in command of the aircraft shall take charge of on scene activities of all other aircraft subsequently arriving until the first dedicated search and rescue aircraft reaches the scene of the accident. If in the meantime, the aircraft is unable to establish communication with the appropriate rescue coordination center or air traffic service unit, it shall by mutual agreement hand over to an aircraft capable of establishing and maintaining such communications until the arrival of the first search and rescue aircraft. Procedures at the scene of an accident when it is necessary for an aircraft to convey information to the survivors and two-way communication is not available. If practicable, it shall drop communication equipment that will enable direct contact to be established with the survivors or convey the information by dropping a hard copy messages. When a ground signal has been displayed, the aircraft shall indicate whether the signal has been understood or not by making the appropriate visual signals in air. When it is necessary for an aircraft to direct a surface craft to place where an aircraft or surface craft is in distress, the aircraft shall do so by transmitting precise instructions by any means at its disposal. If no radio communication can be established, the aircraft shall make the appropriate visual signals. Procedures for a pilot in command intercepting a distress transmission. Whenever a distress transmission is intercepted by a pilot in command of an aircraft, the pilot shall, if feasible, acknowledge the distress transmission, record the position of the craft in distress, take a bearing on the transmission, inform the appropriate rescue coordination center or air traffic service unit of the trans distress transmission, give them all available information, and at the pilot discretion, while awaiting instruction, can proceed to the position given in the distress transmission. Search and rescue signals. Signals with surface craft. The following maneuvers performed in sequence by an aircraft means that the aircraft wishes to direct a surface craft towards an aircraft or a surface craft in distress, circling the surface craft at least once, crossing the projected course of surface craft close ahead at low altitude, and rocking the wings or opening and closing the throttle or by changing the propeller pitch or heading in the direction in which the surface craft is to be directed. The following maneuvers by an aircraft means that 
assistance of the surface craft to which the signal is directed is no longer required crossing the wake of the surface craft close as then at a low altitude and rocking the wings or opening and closing the throttle or changing the propeller pitch surface vessels for acknowledging receipt of aircraft signals they can do by hosting the code pennant vertical red and white stripes close up meaning understood the flashing of a succession of t's by signal lamp in the morse code the change of heading to follow the aircraft the surface vessel for indicating in a ability to comply with aircraft they will be showing it by hosting of international flag n a blue and white checkered square the flashing of succession of ends in the morse code now left hand side we have shown the ground air visual signals which uh, are the codes used by survivors if they need assistance they will make symbol v if required medical assistance it will be x no or negative n yes or affirmative y proceed in this direction arrow if rescue unit is on ground and they want to convey visual signals to the rescue unit in air they will use following chord symbols operation completed triple l we have found all personnel double l and underline we have found only some personnel it will be plus plus we are not able to continue and returning back to base cross cross if the ground rescue unit is divided into two groups and each are proceeding in direction indicated they will show it by arrows information received that aircraft is in this direction they will show it by two arrows nothing found and still they are continuing with the search they will write two times n a to ground signals in response of ground visual signals understood during the hours of daylight by rocking the aircraft wings during the hours of darkness flashing on or off twice the aircraft landing lights or if not so equipped by switching on or off twice its navigation lights Thank <laughs> you.